Is it, which one is she then? Is she? She's the one that's not Snow White or the. Uh, I, I. Oh, she's the non. The, the blonde girl. She's the non blonde girl. Yes. No, she is the blonde girl. No. She's the non blonde girl. Yeah. So she's. Jennifer she, Morrison is the blonde girl, and then there's a dark Snow haired White. woman. Who is Jennifer Goodwin? Okay. You're listening to That Gets My Goat. You should know better. Try everything. Da, 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 da. Try everything. Oh, try da, it all. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's too bad. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. And this is That Gets My Goat. And we don't have a lot of time today, right? So we're going to go quickly. <laughs> Anytime I start talking about things that don't have anything to do with the movie... Feel free to say, hey, I, 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 I gotta get up early in the morning. I'm gonna punch you. Wow. Well, get you back on don't track. Go that far. I did go see a movie with you. Okay, well then I'll just kick you. All right, try everything. <laughs> uh, so the film we saw tonight was Disney Animation Studios' 51st movie. Is it 51st? Wow. Called Try Anything. <laughs> uh, it's called Zootopia. And uh, it's called Zooropa. Oh, that was that U2 album. Yeah. Uh, and, and we went and saw it. We did. We asked you guys if you all thought it would be a good idea, and I would say the majority of the comments on Facebook were yes. Really? You actually... I don't have any memory of you asking. Well, I did them. that, yeah. You asked about Deadpool. What? And then I did it about this, and next I'm going to do about that friggin' Superman movie. Oh, don't do that. Because <laughs> they'll probably make us see it. I'm so far behind. By the time this <laughs> Zootopia episode comes out, the hopefully the people will have shut up about Batman versus Superman. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, here's the thing. We would have gone to see Zootopia anyway. A, we see all the Disney animation studio films except for Meet the Robinsons. And two, it got... A 98 on Rotten Tomatoes, and, and I think that would have motivated. Wow, that's a pretty high score. That's impressive. Recently, Pixar has not gotten nearly that high for their shows. Well, recently, Pixar has not made any movies nearly as good as Utopia, so... Uh, Definitely true. There's that. Although, spoilers, did, did you like it? I, I didn't have a problem with the Shakira song, and I, <laughs> I, I, I dislike Shakira. I always have. But I, I didn't have a problem with the song. So. I disliked the song, but it didn't ruin the movie for me. Okay. Uh, the film was still good. Because there was an Owl City song at the end of uh, Wreck-It Wreck Ralph. Ralph. Yeah, so and there was Owl every City. every time I'd see that, uh, that movie, I'd be like, oh, there's an Owl City song. And now I have to sit through it. And I wondered if it was the same with you, or the tables had turned. Where you, although, I think in, in Wreck-It Ralph, you had... Yeah, you heard that same Al City song twice, too, right? Although not from beginning to end like you did in this. Oh, yeah, they really played it up. and made They made Shakira into a character, and everybody loved her, and she was the greatest singer in the world. And she was the only one that was better than racism. Did you remember that scene where she's mm -hmm. being interviewed, and she's like, This is our city, it's better than this. We are better than this. Predators and prey should be friends. And coochie, coochie. I know that's not Shakira, guys, but I was doing the racist voice. I had to do what goes along with the racist voice. Uh, can can we put a pin in the whole Giselle thing, or do we do we need to talk about that right up front? Um, we can put a pin in it and save it for later if you want to. Okay. Well, basically, the story of Zootopia is that Judy Hopps longs to be the first rabbit or sorry bunny is there a difference bunny cop bunny is, police officer and they're the same thing she becomes that and uh, discovers that uh, there are certain things that are really hard for a bunny to do and one of them is overcoming racism she meets nick wilde who is a fox and she's been warned about the foxes and a fox beat her up when she was a kid and scratched her face indeed yeah it wasn't just foundless it was they had set it up that foxes were not to be trusted. The parents, you know, instilled that in her. And uh, she goes to the aid of a, a, a poor beleaguered fox and then, you know, turns out that maybe he isn't to be trusted. I, I found that really interesting. The constant foxes are bad. Ah, 
Why, why would you say foxes are bad? Except for that foxes are bad. Ah, uh, did you just say foxes were bad, young man? Go stand in the corner. Foxes are not bad. You know, except for when they are. Ah, uh, what did you say? <laughs> okay, that, uh, you missed recess today, young man. Now go think about why it was wrong that you thought foxes were bad. I found that really interesting. The metaphor of the, you know, whatever it is, the minority, let's just say... I thought it worked really, really well. I think and we need to assign a, a minority to each, to each. Uh, you know, the, the predators are going to be one minority. We need to figure out the prey are going to be the other, and then the foxes. I just want to go ahead and fling racist terms around. Well, we can, but I fun. felt like just remember how mutants in the X Men comics were you. It was you, who. You know, if it ever felt like you didn't belong or nobody understood you or somebody was unkind to you for no reason, mutants were whatever you were. And then, you know, they made a bunch of movies about it and mutants became something else that, you know, it's like, well, folks, this is actually what mutants are. But I always liked that. I w the, the first thing that if you were in the band or you wore glasses or you were unpopular or you were a writer or if you were religious or if you had a different colored skin or a diff you know whatever it was that's what mutants were is the, the oppressed minority or suspicious minority or what you know whatever it was and i felt like that's what the predators were in this or the foxes were uh, you know it's not just foxes are black guys or foxes are Hispanic, or foxes are Jews, or whatever it is. It was whatever you want to interpret it as, mm -hmm. I thought. I right. mean, there was the line about you're an articulate fox, which I was just like, ooh, ah, yikes, you're not supposed to use that word. <laughs> but I, I felt like it was vague enough that anybody could paint it, it with their own colors. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh -huh. What did you think on that? Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you. You could... And, yeah, I mean, the same deal with the X-Men. If you wanted to be that, oh, you know, no, these represent gays, you know, you could say that. Or you could say, no, it represents uh, whatever. Anything that somebody wants to be afraid of. But wants to despise because they're different. Yeah. And uh, I had heard before the movie came out, before Zootopia came out, that there was, going, there was a race parallel in the movie. And so I looked for it from the very beginning of the movie. I was just like, whoa, what is it? And yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's right there with the parents saying, you know, foxes are bad and, and you need to look out for the foxes. And, and Judy tries to rise above that. And then, you know, everyone's a little bit racist. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody has a little bit of that in them. And I just thought that that was cool that they dared do that, that they dared have her make that mistake and, and, and flinch. Remember when Nick says, you think I'm going to go f uh, feral? And, and she flinches back and like unsnaps her uh, protector on the, 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 the fox, fox repellent. repellent. And I just, I thought that that was really powerful. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm all, all I'm doing is talking. Do you want to talk for a minute? No, it's okay. I'll interrupt you when, okay. uh, when I need to, or I'll at least punch you Okay. when you wander off topic. When the, we first saw the trailer for this, I honestly, it looked like a DreamWorks film. It looked like a Madagascar kind of thing, where it's just like, oh, a bunch of animals are acting like people. Ha <laughs> ha, hey, there's a city where there are animals. <laughs> Thank goodness they didn't say, featuring a new song by Shakira in the trailer, and name all the celebrity voices, then it would have been a DreamWorks film. But when you see the movie, it's just, it, it's so much more than that. You know what I mean? There was a lot of stuff going on. And primarily, the thing that stood out was the character of Judy Hopps. Was just such an awesome role model, likable, relatable. Just, I, just, I oh, I loved the character. I loved the design of the character. I loved the voice of the character. From beginning to end, I was like, who is that? Whose voice is that? When we saw the trailer before Star Wars with the sloths, I was like, gosh, whose voice is that? <laughs> and... Uh, you know, it wasn't until the end credits that I finally realized who it was. Or they, they said, I didn't realize. But yeah, oh my gosh, I loved Judy Hopps. I loved her big purple eyes, and I loved the little nose, and how it, it uh, what do you call it, twitched. twitched. And the ears, and sometimes they stood up, and sometimes they went down. Uh, I, I loved 
that I thought that she was cute as a little animal sort of way, but I also kind of wanted to have sex with her. Now is when you should be interrupted. Yeah, now it's time to punch you. Uh, wow. Okay. Thanks for listening, folks. See you later. Good night. <laughs> Please donate to the show so that we can... So, so the can, pig can afford a new co-host. So we can get Rich some help. <laughs> so he can get me some counseling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I derailed the show. Hey, let this be our Parsec nominated that gets my goat episode guys because where we put our best foot forward yeah. and we say things that we would not want any judges to hear you talk please tell me what you thought of the story and what you thought of the characters and what you thought before you saw them well i mean the, the first time that i even heard of this film i didn't know about it I, I don't know i think i'm less hooked in to you know what's coming up next compared to you uh, you could probably That's tell me. Because you live in a world where sports exist. Okay, you don't live in that world, huh? <laughs> yeah, I I, uh, I didn't know that this movie was coming until I saw that trailer with the sloth. Uh, we was it Good Dinosaur that we saw that trailer on? Well, it was attached to all Star Wars prints. Oh, it was Star but, Wars. But it, we may have seen it before Good Dinosaur. I know there was a trailer before that that says, In Zootopia, animals evolved to wear clothes. But I, yeah. Yeah, I never saw that one. I only saw the sloth one. And I was, and when, I want to say it was Good Dinosaur because it was one of those movies where it's just like CG animated picture after CG animated picture is showing up on the, the trailers. To the point where I was just like, oh, when I saw, you know, a rabbit and a fox, and oh, yeah, we're going to go to the DMV. And I was like, ah, oh, where's the gun so that I can just eat a bullet and make this end? Because, you know, it was like Norm of the North and uh, the secret lives of pets and all this stuff. Where I'm just like, dude. And trailer on this one was freaking Ice Age 5, 6? Whatever number they're on, where it was just awful. They've stopped numbering them, because once you get that high, it's just embarrassing. Yeah. So it's an uh, Ice Age collision course. Yeah, it's like freaking Land Before Time 14. You're just like, oh, whoa, there's 14 of these? I Is asked Big the other show? day, just for fun, I said, how many Land Before Time movies would you say there are? And he said 14. I'm like, pfft. You sick piece of crap. And I typed it in. <laughs> there are 14 Land Before Times. But by the time this episode comes out, there's probably 16. Yeah, yeah, that's they, they, true. They, Oh, they just crap those out, don't they? <laughs> this trailer stood out among all those other crap fests where, A, it wasn't just like, yeah, look at all these fart jokes and people getting kicked in the nuts. That's what you want your child to see, isn't it? And instead, it was like a scene. They just took them going into the DMV and being helped by the sloths. That was their trailer, which, that's weird. I don't know, they don't do that much in trailers. It's not something that you see often. It's just, yeah, here's a, here's a scene. Here's a funny scene. We're just going to give you that. And nothing else. But that, see, that's confidence in the, the source material. Or, sorry, it's confidence in the movie. Because a lot of times, you know, they just haphazardly edit these things, throwing in, yeah, every single kick to the nuts, every single, like, bad pun, every single character saying, oh, no, you didn't, and then, you know, crediting all of the celebrity voices, and they always have to play, like, an awful hip-hop song or something in the trailer to let you know that this is for the young and that this is edgy. But in this one, it's just, yeah, the, remember, it was, it was at least a minute and a half of the movie just playing, and... Uh, yeah, that I th seemed confident to me. I, I thought it was crazy, and it was really funny. It was a really good bit to use. I don't know. It was it was, it was an interesting way to go about things. But yeah, I mean, we we've talked about it. Uh, I'm sure we probably went on and on until people were turning off their MP3 players and phones and stuff uh, in the Good Dinosaur episode. It's just how. The gold standard used to be Pixar, but I think that has gone away, and now the gold standard is Disney's computer-animated films. And they're not the same, 
Although I'm sure a lot of people don't know the difference. But yeah, I mean, we've had Wreck-It Ralph. We've had Tangled. We've had Frozen. And now Zootopia. And you liked Big Hero 6 a ton, too. And Big Hero 6 was pretty good. Oh, you didn't like it as much as those it, others? It, I think, is a little below the rest of those four that we mentioned, but it's still pretty good. Um, and what about Bolt? Shut up. And that was before. You can't count Bolt, and you can't count Meet the Robinsons, and you can't count uh, Chicken Little. Those ones were pre-gold standard. That was when Pixar was still the gold standard. And now it, is, it has shifted. It's, it's an interesting thing when something like that happens. And now I hear that they... You said they have already announced, like, Zootopia 2 or something like that? No, there's just been talk of, uh, you know, Disney doesn't... Disney has rarely does sequels. Um, we talked about it. The only actual Disney Animation Studio sequel is Rescuers Down Under. And then eventually we'll get a Frozen 2. Yeah. Um, but there had been talk that maybe we'll do a franchise of Zootopia movies. Uh, I welcome it after seeing this, man. I mean, the world, we only saw a tiny bit of that world. That is true. W- w- are there reptiles? Are there? They are there probably in Tundra, or what is the the Sahara land or something Well, no, like but they, they said that it's just mammals in Zootopia, and I, oh. and I wondered, well, are there other places in the world where there are insects and stuff? Well, I guess we saw flies around Tommy Chong. Anyway, I just I I would like to see more adventures with Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde and uh, whatever else they want to do. I guess we have to put up with another Shakira song, but uh, you know, don't have to. Shakira could go away, and they could bring in a new pop star because pop stars tend not to really last that long. Okay, it could be a a platypus that Adele voices. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see how they could make a Frozen two. Without it, I don't, I, I hate to say this, but without it coming out, like, what I expect Finding Nemo 2 is going to be like. I love Finding Nemo, and I really don't look forward to Finding Nemo 2. It's like, I don't know, Ghostbusters 2. And people are just like, yeah, not all Ghostbusters movies are good. Kind of, you know, how they talk about the sequel sullying the original. It's the, that's the thing that I fear with, uh... Finding Nemo 2, because uh, I don't know if I can get on board with it as much as you are. <laughs> Why? I, I, I'm sure I'll see it. I just hope that it won't be a an upsetting experience, because Finding Nemo is my favorite of all the Pixar films. Oh, it's mine too, yeah. So, it'll be hard if it does get sullied. Yeah, I mean, well, imagine if they remade Ghostbusters, how... You know, we talked about Ghostbusters 2, and oof, what if they remade it? Yeah. Anyhow, what what did you think of, of Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde? And, and, I mean, what did you think of the I characters? liked them a lot. They had a, a fun chemistry, and, uh, you know, they were very, you know, you get the buddy cop movies where you have the, the street smart one and the uh, young new guy that, wants to do things by the book or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. And Judy was kind of like the new one that wants to do things by the book, but not necessarily by the book. She just was so full of energy and enthusiasm and optimism that uh, at times you're just like, oh, come on with this. And then, you know, you had Nick who was the opposite. He was the one who's been hustling on the street for all these years and he was able to really help her out a lot because he knew you know the way things worked and I don't know I just thought it was a fun dynamic I enjoyed uh the way they worked together I don't know about sequels if that would still be interesting the next time around but that dynamic could continue uh because I mean she's still less experienced and she's still you know a country bumpkin and all that stuff yeah he's although he's like the new cop he's the new cop but he's he's probably going to be the one that's just like ah, this has always worked before and she's like no no, no we're policemen we can't do what you're saying and <laughs> i don't know uh, maybe they won't do a sequel as i said with disney well this studio 
has been really sparing when it comes to sequels. Yeah. But, you know, the Toon Disney, that company that was made just to make cheap quills, has run, made they wrung all the blood out of a stone that they possibly could, and it just seems unlikely. I mean, yeah, if we get a Zootopia, the series, on Disney Channel or whatever, then, yeah, I, that sullies everything. But if, you know, in 2019 or 2020 or whatever, we get another Zootopia, I, I'm all for it. Yeah, it was uh, one of my favorite parts of the show was just the design of everything. You know, they had this Zootopia where all the mammals could live together and they had the tundra land and they had the the desert land and they had the rainforest land and they had all these districts and they had like the little uh, mouse town where they had the chase running through it where suddenly our tiny little rabbit becomes this giant that can knock over a building. She 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 fixed the knocked over building. Yeah. And she chases Duke Weselton. <laughs> um Did you notice who who voiced him? Well yeah, I mean once you hear that his name is Duke Weselton, you you know because that was the name of his character in Frozen. Um, oh really? And they would always say the Duke of Weaseltown and he'd say it's Weselton. Oh that see I didn't get that joke because you laughed at them uh-huh. when they said it. Because they got it backwards, because they said Weselton, and, and he's like, ah, that's Weselton. Oh, that's funny, dude. Yeah, so, yeah, it was Alan Tudyk again of Firefly fame, if you can call it that. But, yeah, he's... He's, he's uh, there, John Ratzenberger. He something. is, yeah. He's, shoot, how far back does he go? He wasn't in Tangled, was he? I don't know. I, I know him as a... Have some candy. Yeah, he was King that Candy. That was the first time I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's like, what? That's Alan Tudyk? But yeah, he was he was uh, King Candy and he was also uh, Duke Weselton. <laughs> the Duke of Weselton. And now he's Duke Weselton. The, the thing that I really enjoyed was just the design of all that. Where they had, especially when they'd have like the things all mixed together, you know, the train stops and then like three doors open up and like large animals come out and then mid-size and then little tiny ones come out, little door, and they would have like little staircases that were kind of like protected so that the, like the mice could run down them without getting stomped. You know, they're all different things like the giant giraffes go into their little uh, acacia drink place and then the, the hippo comes up out of the water and gets blown dry so that he can go into his uh, job, whatever it is, I guess. So we can. What, what did that kid at the very start say? He wanted, he wanted to, to be, be an actuary. An actuary. <laughs> so he could go be that. He, he said in, instead of hunting for food, he now hunts for tax exemptions or something like that. What was it? Yeah. So. <laughs> it's funny that, he, that they can try and make that sound like something a child would want. <laughs> that was a really, really well-written movie. And, uh, yeah, I just... Oh, I thought that, that, that it was... Uh, well, we, we talked about the design. The design of the characters was just spectacular. Whether it was the Chief Bogo who, you know, had just this really cool design. Uh, you know, the giganticness of the polar bears and the, the rhinoceroses. All the way down to the lemmings and the godfather. Uh, uh-huh. Was he a shrew? Is that what he was? I don't know. That, yeah, they, then you got the revolting wildebeest Tommy Chong character. But yeah, the only one I didn't like the design of was Giselle. Uh, oh. it just Gazelle, sorry. Uh, it just, just she, there was something too uncanny valley about her. And every time she was there, it's just like, oh gosh. And yeah, that, that, a, a female cartoon character I did not want to have sex with. How about that? Just, yeah, am I making progress, Doctor? <laughs> Do we take the pin out and complain more, or are we done? No, that was, I just wanted to mention Giselle. that she was the one character I didn't like the design of. I guess there were those big tigers, at dance, backup dancers at the, at the end. But I just, uh, I don't know, there was something about the arbitrary dance number at the end of an animated film, which is so DreamWorks, dude. I mean, and yeah. it's worked for them since 2001, and and, and they they will never stop doing it. I was it thinking was that when they when they went through that dance sequence and they were showing everybody like at this concert, doing their little thing, and then they cut to the the bad guy, 
in her jail cell. And she's watching it on and TV. And she's watching it on TV. And I saw that and I thought, oh, that's the guy that's inside the dragon at the end of Shrek going, staying alive, staying alive. That's the exact thing ported over. But the dance number could have definitely been skipped. They could have saved probably like a million dollars in animation if they'd not done that. And then we would have only had to have listened to that song once instead of twice. But yeah, they played, like, they played the whole song at the start when she comes into Zootopia, and then they played it again at the end. Like, seriously? Can you think of a, a movie where they pound you over the head with the theme song? They used to do that in, like, the 60s and 70s or whatever. But, yeah, it's just weird to see them do it. And then she got this special credit where yeah. it showed the... The writers of the song and her and all that stuff. And then at the very end when, you know, they run the music credits, they showed it again. And I thought, this has to be contractual in some yeah. weird way. And Shakira got her own full screen credit. Oh, whereas at, they, at that point, you know, they did the main characters. I don't think even they got a full no, screen I credit. No, I think Jennifer, Good, Jennifer Goodwin and uh, Jason Bateman were on screen, were on at, the screen same time. at the same time. And then, then they started showing like three at a time and putting their names up. And then it was just like, oh, and the goddess Shakira. She deigned to be in a small <laughs> animated film. It was just weird. Uh, a promotional thing? It's some kind of contractual, you know, if you will do a song for us and do a voice and we'll put the single out and we'll do a music video and all that, you get to have all this credit. I, I We'll play the song in its entirety twice for you. <laughs> I don't know. It is Disney. And Disney really does love their little pop singers. So maybe that has something to do with it. It's like Mandy Moore being in Tangled Tangled movie. Yeah, but, but that Mandy really was, worked because yeah. it was a musical and she sang her own songs. Plus she had been an actress. And it wasn't Chuck just... sang with her. Okay. Chuck and Mandy Moore sang together in the Os on the Oscars <laughs> because that song was up for best song. And I remember I don't remember where I was and who it was that was watching it but yeah they had chuck and mandy moore singing on the oscars and like why the hell did they have them sing this song why didn't they have somebody that's like you know and somebody's like well they're the ones that sing it in the movie so, oh really but I'm trying to think of what else i have to say about this film it was a good film i really enjoyed it it was funny uh it was interesting I I have to say that I did foresee who the bad guy was. How? When? Relatively. I would say once we got to the boxcar where they get the stuff and, and kind of figured out. And they're like, oh, we need to get this back to the police department. That was when I realized who the bad guy was. And then five or ten minutes later, it was revealed. So not like from the beginning or anything like that but yeah i don't think i picked up on that until like two seconds before it's revealed and the and she says how did you know where we were but yeah back in the day when i was young back once a long time ago these used to be the perfect date movies the the, the disney and yeah. films and yeah, I, I went with my girlfriend to beauty and the beast oh, i envy you sir although and i think Aladdin. i I think I went with my best friend's girlfriend. To <laughs> my best friend's girlfriend. Um, but she yeah, used if, to be mine. If I went to see this on a date and, you know, like halfway through the movie, reached over and, and held hands with, you know, the woman I was on a date with, I, I think that would be pretty spectacular. Except for the moment when Judy Hopps is in the tunnel saying that she's a dumb bunny my date would realize how hard I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> that scene really tore me up. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, or she's apologizing and says she was wrong and she needs help and that holy cow and the, the tears that rolled down her face. I just cried, man. <laughs> yeah, there is that problem. 
It's funny because I have a tendency to cry a lot at movies. To the point where my wife thinks it's funny, and anytime there's an emotional scene in a movie, she'll like lean forward and like check, <laughs> look at my face, and see if there's any tears coming down. Is it possible that there are any women out there that f would find that endearing, or is that a, a, a deal breaker? <laughs> well, I don't think it's a deal breaker. I think they can find. I mean, obviously, my wife finds it somewhat endearing. She likes to to watch for it. She gives me a hard time about it, but I think it's not, it's not good for a first date, though. <laughs> okay. You want to avoid the first date crying at the movie thing. I'm trying to remember if I ever went on a second date with the woman I saw, <laughs> girl I saw Hunchback with. But I remember Hunchback being a tearjerker, too. And, yeah. Uh, I remember <sighs> Hunchback just being a jerker. Oh, wait. <laughs> what? That's supposed to be your line. Oh, okay. <laughs> I dropped my notes before you must have gotten one of mine. I don't know that there's anything more to say about it. I, I heartily recommend Zootopia. I almost get the impression I liked it more than you did. And that doesn't seem to happen very often, does it? Um, <laughs> I just like everything. No, you well, I'm Mikey. Wait, does Mikey like everything or not like apparently everything? Apparently he never... hated everything. And that's why they were going to give it to him, which is beggars all logic, doesn't it? I mean, it's just like... Yeah, that commercial never made any sense. I could never figure out what they were trying to say there. He won't eat it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. I guess they were just trying to say that even a kid that doesn't like cereal will like life cereal. But yeah, the leap in logic of, well, we'll give it to this kid that throws things across the the kitchen, you know, including his own feces, will... Uh, if you have any poo, fling, fling it, it now. What is that? <laughs> it's from Madagascar. Oh, no! There's Are the you... poo-flinging monkeys. You're and quoting Madagascar. When they try to escape the zoo, they get caught, and uh, one of them says to the other, if you have any poo, fling it now. Well, I, I, too, will quote Madagascar. <laughs> Chakalaka! Okay. All right. Just utter, utter shit. So. <laughs> uh, I, anyway, I, I, I think Disney has done it again. It's another one of those must-see animated films. And I liked it more than Inside Out and a heck of a lot more than Good Dinosaur. Yeah. That's yeah, I would agree with you on that one. That's where I would put it. Someday we're going to have to start ranking the uh, Disney... C CG animated features. What? Well, I bet if you pulled Just up, like, if you had brought your phone and you pulled up a list, there'd be like three or four where we're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that one. I forgot that existed. Interesting. You know, like, do you count dinosaur? You remember that one in like 2000? <laughs> as a, that, it's, it's got to be one. It was made by Disney Animation uh, Studio. Yeah, but it's at probably the same one time, of the ones that they count in their list of 51. <laughs> they have the, uh, you know, the outlier, which is uh, Princess and the Frog. But, uh, yeah, you know, I just... think we that one doesn't count as that we, we, we had, I said we had to rank the CG animated. Oh, is features. that what you said? Okay. And you could also just forget about some of them. We'd have to put a start date at the Disney uh, Renaissance. Can you have a Renaissance after you've already had a Renaissance? Maybe this is Baroque period. <laughs> Okay. But I think uh, Chicken Little was the first non-Pixar Disney animated film, or CG film, and did they do one a year after that? Or well, you talked it? about Bolt, and there was Chicken Little, and there was uh, Meet the Robinsons, but I don't know if there were others in there. There had to have been. Before I just Tangled can't. hit. Basically, I just as far as I'm concerned, it's Tangled Forward. Okay, so Tangled is the Little Mermaid in this scenario. Right, right, there you go. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I guess we can do an episode where we talk about that sometime if we want. If I ever start getting these episodes out regularly enough yeah, that we're not you know months be, behind. You know what would be cool is to do like an episode where we talk about the Pixar rules of storytelling. <laughs> That'll have to be a posthumous release, guys. <laughs> we get Justin Charles to edit all those episodes. <laughs> At this rate, rather than daily, those would have to come out. Like, every Monday we're going to have another one of those. 
Uh, that I could manage. Anyway, hey, folks, thank you for listening uh, to another episode of That Gets My Goat. I Go see Zootopia if, you, if it's still playing in the theater. There's so much detail, so many little things there. You can look around and see different animals that... You know, there were times when I'd see like wolves and, uh, you know, other kind of like hyenas and st- stuff like that. I was like, whoa, I, because none of them ever have any lines or do anything. You know, there's there's animals that are just there for the background. Yeah, that's a lot of work, I assume. Although maybe it's not. Maybe you just push some buttons on a computer and it just makes you one. I don't know how that crap works. Oh, anymore. I'm sure it's still a lot of work. <laughs> but once you create one... Then you can do 15 giraffes or a hundred zebras that none of which will ever have any lines. And, <laughs> and, uh, and that's actually kind of cool, you know, a fat zebra and a tall zebra and a skinny zebra and a one, you know, with muscular dystrophy. And, and you're just like, whoa, wait, did you guys see the zebra in the wheelchair? What was up with that? And I, I don't know. I mean, CG is so sophisticated now. You can probably just let them go and they all have like their individual movements and they know where other characters are so they don't hit into them and you didn't program where it walks and what it does but it just does it on its own like here's you know a stand that's selling something and just random cg characters go to it device stuff <laughs> just like ba- uh, non-player non-playable characters in a video I, game it's, maybe i'm naive but it just seems like at this point they've gotten that you know like once they does invented that massive program where you can just have armies fight and they react realistically and sometimes, you know, this side wins and sometimes, you know, each each guy gets killed in a different way, but it's not programmed in. It's just, it decides on its own how that's going to happen. Because, yeah, there, I, there were probably a couple of shots with hundreds of characters in it. Yeah. And that concert crap at the end mm. had pro- maybe thousands of characters in it. It's millions that they could have saved by cutting that out, <laughs> damn it. Millions. And all it did was make the movie worse. <laughs> oh boy, if I had a dollar though for every one of those movies, you know, like Mulan or whatever, that's just great, and then they have to throw a musical number at the end. It's like an obligatory thing. Sorry, the law says that's how the, these movies have to end. So let's start <laughs> up the pop song and have them all dance. Uh, I I would not ask for donations if I had a dollar for every one of those. Because yeah, they was... all end that way. I remember Mega Man. Not Mega Man. Mega Mind. I, I thought Mega Mind was solid. I was like, wow, this is... And then they play Bad by Michael Jackson. And all the characters dance and sing it. And it's just, oh, guys, guys, no. <laughs> Please. Oh, okay. Well, let me erase that IMDb rating. Okay, I got to <laughs> okay, drop a gotta, star. Got to change that. Yeah, that's one of those things that needs to go away for sure. They should have had a, a song in the middle, though. That's one of those things that they do with, with the Disney movies is they, they're they not all the same. They don't have the same target audience, maybe? I don't know. It, it's like um, people used to complain that all the Pixar movies were only aimed at boys and they wanted one that was aimed at girls. But with Disney, it, it seems like they go back and forth. You have Tangled, which is, you know, your traditional kind of Disney princess kind of a film. And then you have Wreck-It Ralph, which is not. And then you have uh, Frozen, which is again. And then this one, which Big was Hero not. 6. Oh, and Big Hero 6, too, right? I forgot about that one. So I guess they don't just go back and forth. You know, that was a back and forth, because this one, we got our female protagonist, if that's what yeah, you're but saying. Yeah, no, I was just talking about that, that princess style with the songs. There was no songs, except for Try anything. Shakira. This would have totally worked as a musical, but I think they, they just that needed, wasn't what the mood that they were going for with it. Eh? They needed Judy to stop and go, what would I give to live in Zootopia? What would I... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, the musical format works for some stories and doesn't work for other stories. And I, I'm i glad every time that there's a new musical because usually they work extra, extra hard on them. It's rare that you get one of those put out by Disney where you're just like, wow, the songs are just crap. Right. Um, and, and so, you know, that's cool. But every once in a while they... Uh, 
they do one that's just straight, and, or you know, it was intended to be a musical, and then they change that. Yeah, it used to always be a musical every time, didn't matter what it was. But yeah, maybe it was Pixar that broke that uh, mold for them, so they didn't feel like they were uh, required to do that anymore. And I know that there's a lot of people that are just like, Ugh, musical, I'm not going to go see that. I hate musicals. I'm too cool for that. So there is that that you have to deal with. You know, you don't want to limit your audience. But, yeah, I like it when they uh, put out musicals. And this one should have been. It was due. It was the uh, After Big Hero 6. Which is worse, Fallout Boy's song at the end of Big Hero 6 or uh, Shakira's song? See, I didn't hate this Shakira song like you did, but this this was worse than the Fallout Boy song. Yeah, I was going to say, I'd, I usually hate Fallout Boy, but I didn't hate the Fallout Boy song, but this song, oh, oh gosh, did I hate it. <laughs> oh, anyways... I think we're uh, I think we're ready to be done. I think this uh, we we've run the course in this uh, episode. Uh, yeah, I think so too. I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed our episode. That you enjoyed Zootopia, and if you want to talk about it, remember that we've got the forums over at dunesteef.freeforums.org. Come on over and post if it's been a long time since you've done so. If it's been never since you've done so, then go register and, and, and join and we will welcome you. I would ha be happy to find some new listeners or some new forum mites. And uh, we will be back soon with another That Gets My Goat because we've got over 30 of them recorded. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Talk to you later. Good night. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Apparently, the creative in Creative Commons doesn't mean anything. Stay. Bark, bark, wag tail. Good boy. Good boy. Uh, really big? Seriously? <laughs>